You're listening to For Better and Worse with Jess and Rach. Oh, God. Oh, God. <sighs> Here we are. Here we are. Um, welcome, everybody. <laughs> From the burnt out. Bear with us. Bear with us. Burnout couch. We are, Burnout couch. Yeah. It is now, it is, it used to be codependency couch, but at this point in time, uh-huh. it is the burnout couch. And Jess was just saying that she thinks that there's something in retrograde, which I something agree. Something is going Something's on. happened. Something's going on that um, everyone's life is a shit show right now. Right. Um, everyone's hanging, about, hanging on by a literal thread, yeah. I think. Um, and hey, I just want to say, if you feel that way, we're in this shit together. Yes. I've been having bad dreams, like having to wake myself up from like sweats. That's scary. Yeah. I am having anxiety so bad that my chest physically hurts. Hurts. It's so tight. Yeah. I like cannot relax. And I'm like, I cannot think of anything that's bothering me. Like I'm going to, I'm really busy and I am taking things day by day. And it's like, I know that I know what's ahead of me. I know what's in store for me. It's shitty, but I have to take it day by day. But I'm like, has having like a physiological response to stress and anxiety. So, and what is it about stress and anxiety that makes you have more of it? Like it's because I don't want to be feeling this way. I don't want to be feeling this way. But like, it's like, I find more things like, you know, I've been having this, like, do I even like my work? kind of feeling that these was, days. yeah and i'm like that's something i do i i don't have the time for that we hey we don't we don't have the time or the energy but it did get me on a certain app that no throwing no shade and i will not name the title of this because i do not want to get in trouble but there's this app that newer photographers and i guess you know photographers that maybe not be newer go to for like pose ideas and prompts <laughs> and i like I was a photographer before this was a thing. And so like I just been doing it the old fashioned way, scouring Pinterest and then searing those things in the back of my mind. But then I was like, you know, what if that is the secret sauce? And I, I was told sending, you before you bought the stupid pack. I didn't buy it. Okay. I got the free one. Free downloads. But I'm, I I'm not gonna lie, I've done this. <laughs> so when you were sending me these, I was like, Oh, i I know these. <laughs> My favorite one is the snug bug position, yes. which is like guy or other person behind someone and you cuddle Wrap them up. Wrap them yep. up. And the direction is stand behind your lover, reach one arm underneath them and one on top and link your fingers. Close your eyes and take in this moment. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the prompt, the question they have you ask. Oh, see, this is the, If you had to take some time apart, how long do you think you'd last? <laughs> That's the question? That's the secret sauce? Ew. Why? If you broke up right now, how how long long would you guys last before getting back together? What? Like, why would you ask that during a nice, snuggly engagement session? Don't ask that. Also, I think they'd be like, uh, don't ask questions like that. Don't. Oh, and then I the other one I saw. Like, make them laugh or something. What's the other one I saw? Oh, my. These are so bad. Oh, yeah. Ferris wheel flirt. <laughs> Grab a duvet, get cl- cozy, and find a Ferris wheel backdrop. <laughs> Ca- just casual. <laughs> okay. Let me find a boardwalk. Not, not, not find a duvet. Not and bring then, a blanket. And then the, the question to get this reaction is, what's your favorite amusement park ride? It's going to make her crack up. It's going to make her crack crack up, head back, laughter. Looking forward to cracking up. Looking forward to cracking (laughs) up. Oh, my God. I love that. (laughs) I'm like, this is not, if you are a photographer or to some people that listen. uh, Well, yeah. If you've ever been photographed uh, professionally, you you know, we use prompts. We use poses. And I've never. Okay. The things that they're calling prompts are just conversation starters. Yeah. Those are not prompts. A prompt to me is like run chase each other like prompting to do something yeah this is um like prompts that i won't do and i can't stand by um and that started happening and i was like instant no absolutely not was the whisper your favorite breakfast cereal in their ear as sexy as possible can't do it no i won't okay here's here's what i'm saying it's like if you are on the other side of the camera just think of that. That's how I'm like. I know what it feels like to be photographed. And if if someone said that to Joe, 
I'd be like, please don't. I'm like, I'm cringing. You would I'm laugh. So, I'm uncomfortable. Like, I think I have to be funnier than that. I have to be funnier than embarrassed laughter. I mean, that's all. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. Um, I also need to bring something up before I forget because mm-hmm. um, Josh was texting me. He's been in a panic about what to wear for my cousin's wedding in Arizona because it's going to be like bougie and like high end, high end VIP exclusive. Well, he texted me last night. Oh, yeah. Um, number one, he bought a pair of shoes that I don't hate, but also don't love. Are they Ed Hardy's? Maybe. No, 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 no. Show me. What is that? It's a, it's a, I kind of like these. Yeah, I kind of like them too. Those are kind of rad. Does he have high top black vans that have, do the same thing? No, but those are different though. Sure. Okay. I like them. Then he texts me. Um, and I had to call him after this because I was like, I don't know if you're playing a prank and I need to know right now. Um, thinking light blue dress shirt, suspenders and a tan pant. <laughs> and no. I said, I called him. I was like, are you like, are you joking? Are you messing? I'm like, were you on Pinterest 2015? Yeah. Looking at groomsmen I- attire ideas? Cause no, 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 khakis, no, no. a blue dress shirt and, and suspenders. suspenders. I said, I sent him some inspo. Okay. Because he said, if you were to dress Joe for a desert wedding <laughs> guest, what would it look like? And I was like, are we suiting up or are we not suiting up? You need to tell me. And he was like, oh, I'm suiting up. I was like, okay. so Suiting up? He was just wearing light blue dress pants or light blue shirt suspenders and a tan Well, pant. that's what I sent him. Yeah. Oh, I was like, you need to go bolo tie. He said, we are going bolo tie. I said, send me the full look. I can't just say, yes, bolo tie. He said, just are been. Those just from been, me? Yeah. Just been brain stewing with Jess. Yes. <laughs> I said, I'm I like, cannot. Say less. I love these texts. But I think he's gonna look. He's gonna look good. I think we got him. We got him in the right. I said go like charcoal, like go like gray suit yeah. with white shirt, black bolo tie. With even if he wanted to rock some like black boot ordeal, if he could, we gotta start him off slow. Or even go loafers, no socks. Yeah. Go loafers, no socks. This whole thing brought me and Jerry on a tangent of like how we would like how how would you dress your partner. If you could, because Josh, I've had no choice. Josh has been wearing the same clothes since I met him in 2010, like black, you know, basketball shorts, T-shirts, hoodies. And that is his aesthetic. And I love him. And that's fine. Um, So when he dresses up, a lot of the times it's like jeans and Cole's polo. And I'm like, that's for you. And I I love you. Mm -hmm. And there we are. A what polo? Coles, you know, just going Coles. to Coles. Yeah. Going to Coles. But I'd love to see him like my vision for Josh is like 90s grunge skater boy fashion. Like I'd love a lot of thrifted stuff. Like I would love to see him in that, you know, like the flat build caps, the like loose uh like flannels, mm-hmm. like old t shirts, mm-hmm. like vans. Like that's how I would dress Josh. And it got Jerry on. Jerry, like Shane just started kind of like going out you know finding his own style he's you know and get, he's 30 now he's mm-hmm. like i'm gonna find it and jerry's like i've been dressing that man for 10 years she says his style icon is noel from the great british baking show <laughs> <laughs> and it's true shane loves like loud patterns and oh like, wow yeah she's like when i met him he was wearing a deep v and size four women's jeans Stop. going to warp tour that's She's funny, like, but that's I, she reeled him in to like hipster cash. Yep, but that's not that's not who Shane truly wants to be. He wants loud and busy patterns. Yes. Oh my. And what God. he wore to his wedding was dope. It was like a forest green suit and then like a silk floral shirt. Yeah, I'm like that's great. That looks yeah, that that fits for him. I've been dressing Joe since we met. Very lucky. I mean, I knew I had a lot of work to do. Never oh. forget the time where he bought a vest from Target. Um, this is a funny story. He, um, <laughs> like a winter vest or like a, okay. Vest? So like, it's a gray, almost fleece, but not fleece. Okay. It's almost like that looks like that sweatshirt material yeah. that guys wear. And it was a gray vest. And he, t- I saw him, he pulled it out of his bags when he was staying over. He hasn't moved in yet. And he saw him rip off the tag and he swears, uh, 
he buttons up a flannel t- and he puts the vest on and zips it up. And then he's like, I don't know. I might have to tuck this shirt in. He's He goes to tuck in the flannel. I was like, no, dude, no. But it's also we're way too new for me to like, yeah. now I would dog yeah. him. Absolutely dog him. <laughs> and I do. And I do. And he knows it. But I was like, oh, you know, yeah, it looks good. You know, I was, we're going out for a date day. We go to Phoenix Coffee. He goes, he's like, I am so self-conscious about this fast. He's like, I cannot stop <laughs> He goes to the guy who takes our order. He's like, hey, I got to ask you guys. Keep it real with me. He's like, does this vest look good? Like, what does this vest look like? And he's like, hey, man, looks like you're going to your kid's soccer game. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm mortified. Never forget this fucking vest. It was terrible. <laughs> he never wore it again. It just took the tags off. That's oh, he was thing. stoked because he's like, he's trying to branch out. He's got a new girl. He's trying to like, I'm like, this is Joe's version of like trying to amp his uh-huh. style up. But we've nixed that completely. Yeah. And we've got him. We've got him in a good spot. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I know for me, and I know it's not the same thing, but like, you got to love him where he's at. Like if Josh had full reins over dressing me, I would look like a girl in 2012 trying to rush no. Delta Gamma. Like I would be in the skinny jeans and the peplum top. No. And that's... In, in little baby heels. That's how Josh would dress me. If he and so I'm like, no, I dress like a gay girl, mm-hmm. and that's my aesthetic. And yeah. he knows it, and he loves me, and, and I love him, and he for. dresses like a midwestern white dude. And if he wants to bolo tie, he said. He said after this, he said, I think it'd be um, rad. Honestly, he said bolo tie, bolo tie, cowboy hat, mustache. Who says no? I said, I would like us to fine-tune some of those details. But I don't say no to the bolo. No, no cowboy hat. No mustache. No don't mustache. shave your beard off. Please don't. For the love of God. That's why I said all that. Joe's like, you know when you met me, I didn't have a beard. I was like, yeah, and now you do. No. <laughs> big, big big beard girl right here. Big yeah. beard girl. I always have been. I must be too. Um, but guys, before oh. we end up season two, I have to say, I finally have a stupid fight of the week let's hear it okay 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 we gotta hear it so it's football season and that to me means part of my boyfriend is dead this is a josh episode yeah we're piggybacking last week we we love him we love him we know you guys know him more now that's so exciting um but it's football season and that just means that like Every Sunday, um, Josh is dead to the world, and meaning he's just not home, and I don't know how to talk to him. So, you know, it's Sunday. He goes to his friend's house to watch the Browns game, and I'm, like, doing work on my laptop. I have a shoot that night, so I'm, like, just kind of, like, chilling because Sundays are, like, kind of my day off, half day off. Yeah, um, let's be honest. You don't take any days off. I know. I don't. Ooh. And I'm very happy clearly it's working for me um we don't like that <laughs> hustle culture <laughs> um but so my sister said a joke once that made josh laugh so then of course i milk that joke for all it's worth which is um is it like chip mahomes pat pat yeah patrick mahomes not chip patrick mahomes is a player for the can whoever Who we played last week right and but he's really good He's, he's a good player. Mm-hmm. And so Laura said once when they were talking, she goes, Mahu? And you had to be there. <laughs> and so Josh finds that really funny. So I'll, like, I heard him the other day talking to, like, my mom or someone and mentioned this guy's name, Mahomes. And I go, Mahu? And so at halftime, I just text him, Mahu? And I had checked the, the score and I saw that they were winning. And he goes, babe, do not celebrate too early ever and never send me these kinds of texts in the middle of a game. Please. All caps. <laughs> he did not. Well, it's, he's on the other team. But I didn't. I wasn't even for was, sure that it was. That game was too close for comfort, Rach. First game, Browns hit the ground running. I wasn't watching They're, the game. Well, that, I just checked the score. And I didn't even know that. I So I numbered things down for him. I do one. Two, three, four. One, 
wasn't even celebrating. Two, wasn't even sure this was the game with that guy. Three, I'm not watching. Four, very disappointed in how you respond to that. This is what I mean when I say I hate football. Just trying to connect with you after not talking for hours. Okay, Ray. And then he said, You're pissed. I was so pissed. I'm like, don't come at me like that. No, he said, oh, my gosh, we are having a great time. I'm not being mean. I promise. Don't hate me. Love me. Love you. I said, do you think that what you sent me had even a hint of humor? I I read it with humor. If he had sent the Drake gif with the. Yeah. That's humor. Babe, don't text me in the middle of a game like that ever. What's your tone? That's funny. I didn't read it like that. I read it. Well, it's like sports, camaraderie, fun, rivalry. I he said. I said, "How was I supposed to know?" He said, "It was the please, all caps." I was supposed to convey humor. Mm -hmm. I said, "All caps is so serious." You're just on Team Josh right now because you've been bonding over fashion. I know. Fuck texting though. So another text fight, but I was really mad. I was like, "You can sleep at Ian's." (laughs) Did he? No. Oh. I was like, damn. That's what I wanted to say. But he back, he backtracked. He he backslid all the way into 2008. He oh, was God. Awkward walk. Awkward, Awkward moon walked. Walk. Sports. Do you have any stupid fights? Sports. You you've gone all over the world, basically. I have. Um, oh, you had an anniversary, Jess. Why am I so selfish? Talking about my boyfriend. You had a whole year of marriage celebrated. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I took two weeks off of the pod. Hot dog. As you guys know, I had my birthday weekend, which we talked about. And then I went to Kentucky over the weekend for my anniversary. Hung out with Rachel Joy Monet Falls. Hey, Best name in the world. I know. Um, Yeah, it was great. The trip was awesome. Kentucky is a is a really weird place, fun place. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. The trip was dope. Um, I'm trying to think of things that happened. I also went to Michigan. <laughs> I, you you got to see Rachel, but she photographed you guys. Right? She did. We did a little Andy session. Andy <laughs> sesh. <laughs> that 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 gift there, that you that meme that you sent me is even funnier now. Wait, which one? You know, someone's marriage is in trouble when they drop the fall photo shoot. <laughs> I was in tears at that. I was like, that is so fucking funny to me. It is funny to me. It's also just as a photographer and as a married person, that was just way too fucking funny. Um, (laughs) No, I went to Michigan for a shoot as well. That was wild. Um, (laughs) um, When I got home, this was really not really funny, but anyways, um, funny to me. So I'm like, uh, Josh. He's on the brain. The J names. Joe. I was like, oh, can you bring my suitcase upstairs? And I'm like in the bathroom and he is, I'm just like cleaning up and he brings the suitcase upstairs and I step out of the bathroom and Joe, it's like wood floor and then it like turns to carpet and he's like rolling the suitcase in front of him like fast and he like rolls it and like right when it gets to the carpet part, it just stops Stops. completely and he lays flat out on top of my on top of the suitcase crushing it absolutely annihilating it it was just so fucking funny and he's just like laying there with his arms out in front of him and his legs behind (laughs) i was like i absolutely lost it but um no it's been good it's been crazy i am absolutely a mess if i'm just being honest i have the busiest three weeks ahead of me and um that's where i'm at i'm trying to take it day by day but I here I am, here I am on the uh, what do we call this? The burnout couch. The burnout couch, and I'm lax in here. Yeah, but we're happy to have you today. Soon to be joining us. Yes, we're so stoked for this episode. Um, we have Aaron, Aaron James, with us, Aaron everybody. James. He um he was my DJ. We have referred to him many times on the pod. Mm-hmm. Um, he is. Our favorite DJ in this area. The only not shitty DJ we know of. And that's why we brought him here because we've been dogging. We've been dogging (laughs) DJs. I I hope he dogs DJs with us. I hope he does too. Um, We've been dogging DJs on this pod. We talk about how the stigma comes with different DJs. And we've said that that Mm -hmm. this guy really differs from that. Mm -hmm. And you guys will see that. Um, We're going to ask him some questions. We're going to. He's He's going to give give you some advice. Yeah. His top tips for how to throw a A dope dope party party for your wedding. It's going to be so great. Um, He will be here shortly. Yes. So we will check back in then. And we'll be right back. All right, guys. We're on. We're live. 
And we're here with Aaron James, everybody. Oh, yeah. Here he is. <laughs> okay, we need to move this closer to your face. You know, you. as we set up. Yeah. We're going to be just talking over here into this mic. Okay. Okay, we're just going to get I close. Have to, I have to cuddle in with you, Jess. Aaron, welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I do have to ask, what do you go by... <laughs> We know that you're a DJ. We know that you're an MC. You're a wedding host. You go by. Mm-hmm. What do you prefer? Um, wedding connoisseur. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> one one size fits all. So whatever you're looking for, uh, you know, we lead with music, but but you know, we provide all the little details that you may miss the day of on your wedding. Amazing. Perfect. Amazing. I love that. Because I like wrote like DJ and MC and different questions. And, but and I'm like, true. what? Yes. That doesn't all like suit. Whenever I think of a DJ. I got one. I got one thing in my mind. What is that? It doesn't look like Aaron. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It definitely yeah. doesn't. Middle-aged Italian man, short. <laughs> we've been, annoying. We've been dogging DJs on this podcast. Yeah, I've Aaron heard. Hansen. I've heard. But then we're like, but Aaron, but, Aaron, it's <laughs> yeah. but not Aaron, it's not. We son. appreciate that absolutely. Oh. So we're like, we're so stoked to have a DJ on here and really debunk some myths and get down to throwing a dope party. Yes. Okay. So. Let's just intro you, Aaron. Let's talk about how you've become this wedding connoisseur and what your journey has looked like up okay. to this point um, with music and everything else. Let's see. San and I are, we'll say five years in, but the first two years we're just really, we're getting our feet wet, unsure of really what we're doing. Uh, I actually got into this by accident. Um, <laughs> I'm a vocalist naturally, so San and I were performing at a few random venues separately. Um, and I had a friend of mine, her sister was getting married and the DJ canceled two weeks before the wedding. So they're in a panic and they're like, Aaron, can you help us? I'm like, yo, I'm like a 2 a.m. drunk bar DJ. Right. I don't do anything that professional. But as a wedding gift, I helped them out and I must have did something right because I was recommended for 12 weddings from that wedding. Holy and shit. the ball just started rolling out there. Now they were sporadic. Some were like two years from then. Uh, some were the very next year. Some yeah. were the same year. Um, but I realized that I, I couldn't do it on my own or it wasn't as fun doing it on my own. Mm-hmm. So I reached out to a few other DJs. Um, I worked with two other gentlemen who, you know, we got the job done, but it didn't feel right. Uh, so I reached out to San, who was hands down the dopest DJ I know. Um, the dopest human. He is. <laughs> in general. The most adorable, right. some are saying. <laughs> I know. So we, uh, yeah, no, we, we, oh. we met. We went over a few little details that I knew I had as far as information. Um, and our first wedding, we rented the equipment. We had one speaker. We had equipment that we were unfamiliar with, but we just brought the energy that we knew we could. And we were recommended for eight weddings from that wedding. Um, and the ball kept rolling. Um, but one of the biggest blessings is meeting photographers like yourselves um, who have kind of plugged us in. You know, we're five years in, but we don't have a name. So everything yeah. that we've done. Isn't that wild? Well, though? that's what's crazy about Aaron and Sons. Aaron and Son. <laughs> well, I met you guys at um, a wedding through Emily Richards. Yes. So yes. I was like shooting for her uh-huh. while she was there, met them, linked up with them. And I was like, wow, vibes seem right. And I was like, my, I wasn't really happy with my DJ for my wedding, but I was like, these two had such a good vibe. Kid Cootie. Kid, Kid Cootie. Cootie. <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> she said, you got to go. I said, that yeah. is it. You got to go. Um, but no, I, when I looked you up, like you didn't even have a website or anything. And I like asked him, I'm like, what's up with them? Like, do they DJ? Is this like a side gig or whatever? But it's like, you guys book up from having zero marketing, really. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's all word of mouth. Um, five years in all word of mouth this year, we've done 17 so far and we've got nine to go. Welcome. So, we're, so we're all word of mouth. Right, right, right. Welcome. Welcome. We call this the burnout couch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, it yes. It used to be the codependency yeah. couch, but yeah, we're all yeah. burnt out. This is the so. reset button here. Yeah. You got it. We have to do our audience a favor and press pause for the month of October because Jess and I'd be getting on here in tears. Yeah. Just like, it's yeah. in, as you know. It's too like, much. Oh, yeah. we're, in the, oh, yeah. we're in the last leg of crunch it. Time. It's, it's crunch time. It's crunch time. Right. Oh. But yeah, so. Dope. Dope. And you are from Cleveland, like born and raised out of in Cleveland. Yep, yep. Well, I was actually born in Akron. Oh, um, kind where of like we a, reside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King James kind of story. Yes. You know, Aaron James, King James, born in Akron, Moved born and raised in Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Love to see it. But we don't limit ourselves. Um, 90% of our weddings are in the Akron, Canton area, mostly because of Emily. Honestly, she's been yeah. a godsend. Mm-hmm. We did her wedding uh, three, maybe four years ago. Yeah. 
and she recommends us for a lot of her clients and that kind of got our name out in Canton real heavily. Yeah. Um, a lot of venues put us on as their preferred DJs, which yeah. is awesome. But, mm-hmm. you know, to drive from Cleveland to Canton, we don't mind it, but we would love to have something a little closer more to Cleveland. Home. Or further out, you know, yeah. send, send us out of state. Charleston. Charleston coming up. Coming up. Yeah. We're having the same wedding in Charleston. That's yes. so Crazy funny. Is it that. is. Cleveland to South Carolina. Let's well, go. Yes. I'm so excited for that. So what is like your setup? Like your like go-to stuff that you're like, can't can't do a wedding without this? Um, obviously, like I in you guys have a much more stripped down approach than some yes other DJs. so we we pride ourselves on bringing our energy as opposed to bringing a bunch of gadgets and gadgets now we have them you know i just mm-hmm. invested in a bunch of lighting um sign just got brand new turntables we just got more speakers so we can have more of a profound setup mm-hmm. but without that you know we had to make do with less um so the biggest thing for us is each other you know I, i'm not going anywhere without sign yeah. per se. <laughs> As, so, as long as San is in the passenger seat, we're good. I don't care. We can have a little... For sex uh, on at all speaker. costs. <laughs> right. Seriously, um, sex on. <laughs> um, aside from that, the biggest things for us are um, preemptive playlists. Like, we get to know couples on a genuine, genuine level. I hate when we go to weddings and it sounds like the DJ is just playing the top 40 from YouTube. Oh, so Lord. A predetermined, oh, Lord. you know, oh, Lord. <laughs> guideline of a playlist um, asking couples, you know, songs that make you think of each other, maybe songs your parents dance to. Um, and we build around that. We right. listen to the songs thoroughly, get to know these couples on a personal musical level, and then expand from there. And yeah. it gives us kind of a blank canvas to do our own thing. Which is- this is one of my main questions for DJs. Yeah. Like, okay. Are you ever at a wedding and they give you the preferred playlist and you're like, this is going to be a dud? Dudley, nobody, Dudley nobody wedding. gonna dance to mm. this. Man. You can say it. Yeah, we're okay. in a safe space. Yeah. <laughs> this is well, yes, we, we, we roast weddings ourselves. We so we definitely have had that. Um, but we kind of take the vote of action. So we start off doing exactly what the brides and the parents and the families ask for. You know, you're paying. You're gonna get exactly what you want. Right. You mm-hmm. work for them. But. As it develops, this is why you hired us. Right. Allow us, give us the freedom to to be us, and you'll get the most bang for your buck. Yeah. What we appreciate to this day, and I'll say this on record, just to this day, your wedding is the best wedding we have ever done or been to for, for one of the most simple reasons. You trusted in us and gave us the freedom to be ourselves. You're like, listen, I see what you guys have. Here's the songs that I want. Other than that, just do you. And that was yeah. the cue yeah. mark. That was the first time anybody had ever given us the reins and let's, let us take control. And to this day, the best wedding we have ever done. That means so much to me. But also, like, welcome to being, that's like one of the pinnacles of getting being a creative and yes. being an entrepreneur yes. where it's like people trust you for you. Yeah. And yes. I think, I yeah. honestly think once you guys like hit your rebrand and start having like an, a presence, a website, you mm-hmm. know, People, people, will people will then say, oh, they they got it. They're official. They're legit. They're official. Yes. Yes. You know, it's like I, word of mouth is always great. But like when you establish yourself and you invest in your branding and you invest in your brand as it is, then people are like, oh. And they're like, willing to invest yeah. in you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And they're like, I oh, they, they've got it. And I yeah. think you'll find that a lot more when you guys can finally take that step back, oh that breath from. It's been a long time uh, coming. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that oh, oh, oh. might be a different episode, but we'll see. Oh, okay. It's still early. Keep the whole song. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Bring song back. Um, I guess like moving with that because we're talking about talking with clients. What are some questions that you do want to hear from clients? I'm sure you hear like basic ones, like mm. you know, like. Mm. But what are some questions you want to be asked? Um, what makes us different from other DJs? I love when clients ask yeah. that, um, and most people are hesitant. They don't want to yeah. put you on a spot, but I love. I love that opportunity to tell you exactly why mm-hmm. you should go with us. Mm-hmm. Um, it kind of gives the clients an insight on who we are, our background, as well as, you know, where we're trying to go. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the biggest things where people were just like, oh, we've heard about you. And that's the end of the conversation. Like, well, what have you heard? Yeah. Allow me to elaborate. Right. Um, but at the same time, not every client is the same. Uh-huh. So you kind of learn to weave in between. Yeah. Um, another big one is... When they ask, you know, can we have control of song selection? Well, absolutely. It's your wedding. You can have whatever you want. Um, But a lot of times people have no idea what they want. And they they seek guidance. So my biggest thing is, 
you know, ask your vendors, you're paying them, ask them what their professional creative opinion is. And I promise you, you will get some of the best answers. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it was hard because we had already hired, semi hired a DJ before we went with Aaron's right, right. And we asked for full creative freedom over music. Like we expressed how music is important to us and we wanted to, you know, create the playlist because we didn't have full trust, <laughs> right? So, and they were like, oh, I guess we can do that. Like I asked for like an entire playlist, Mumford and Sons, indie type stuff during dinner. And he's like, oh, we'll just do instrumentals. And I was like, oh, that's not no, what I said. That's not what I said. But it's like, but also you were like, oh, hell yeah. Like, what do you really? mean? Like, it was not even a question. Mm-hmm. And that was like, this is my vision for the day. And you were just going yeah. with it. And then obviously giving you the freedom to do you. But it was like, most DJs are like, oh, no, but this is the way our company does this. And it's not that way with you guys. And I think that's so rad. So the beauty of it is with San and I being relatively new, we, we've we learned relatively fast that it's not one size fits all. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, ideally, you only do this once in your life. But you want to do it right. And even if you do it more than once, you want to do it right. Right. So allowing clients to to be creative and, and have their vision for what they want is is ideal. You mm-hmm. know, it's ideal for me. If you're happy, I'm happy. Right. Yeah. Do you feel like so some one of my like observations from the like dance floor as mm-hmm. a photographer is I feel like a mistake <laughs> or, or a thought, a problem problem that some people can come into is when they pick it's either one of two ways they pick like an oldies playlist right Mm -hmm. but then if they invite mostly young people the dance floor is going to be dead flip that if it's like a new top (laughs) hits playlist but but your guests are mostly middle-aged family members dance floor also dead you got to like almost pick your playlist to your audience. So the biggest thing the day of, <clears throat> excuse me, is reading your audience. Mm-hmm. Um, now, San and I have kind of created a formula that works for us. Like I said, it's not one size fit all, fits all. But we realize that during the dinner portion in the first half of dancing, you're going to have your grandparents, your great aunts, your uncles, the aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. So we like to play songs, you know, that our generation knows, but yeah. they really know. Yeah, you know, the crowd it resonates with them. Right. Yeah. So and that leads into basically you cater to the that older crowd first because they're the ones who come early. They're on time. They leave yeah. the best gifts. They want to take pictures with the bride and groom and then yeah. they leave. So you want to make sure that they are catered to not first and foremost, you but earth, wind, and fire. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know yes. You, remember. you can't lose. Yes. You know, a little Motown splice in there, some oh. Sinatra, yes. because we know it, but like they're singing their hearts out at yeah. dinner. Exactly. So you want to make sure that they feel just as welcome. And then in there, you can transition and either continue with the ODs or transition into some of the newer stuff. Then we hit them with yeah. the Bruno Mars. Right, right. right. But that, right? That, a nice little mix in between you can hit and I then love transition. It. I'll talk yeah. <laughs> Like, I love that. It is. It's it's a, a, a method to it. And yeah. I hate when a lot of DJs, you know, they've been doing this for years. So I, I respect them as far as their consistency. But you've got to change with the times. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Yeah. traditional weddings. I hate to say it, but are no longer a thing. You know, everybody is it's new. Yeah. That people are trying yeah. new things. Yeah. And I think were you mentored by any like existing wedding dj or do you, uh, i don't think so and i think that's I why think you're good prior i to, think that's right, why okay, okay that like makes sense fresh eyes yeah fresh eyes into, yeah yes coming into the industry at this time that you are yeah and yep. just like being a sponge to it and, and kind of taking it all in and being like oh this is how it should be done yeah so i think it's really prior to our first wedding i can honestly say i had only been to one or two other weddings right. so i didn't even know how weddings fresh operated eyes. per se So it was just from the wedding standpoint entirely. So I I think when I walked in, um, I reached out to vendors. I reached out to the photographers for the caterers. Hey, if you guys need anything, let me know. You know, I'm I'm still trying to find my way through this. But as long as we work together, you know, it makes things easier. And that's a big thing that I I, I love to tell clients. You know, I like to meet the photographer ahead of time. I like to talk to the caterer ahead of time. That way, the day of, you know, we're not strangers. It's easier when you're working. You know, all the vendors have the same general idea. We want to make this the best event Mm -hmm. for the clients. But it's Mm -hmm. hard when, you know, you're all on different pages. You want to make sure your vendors are on the same pages. At least have one general moment for them all to either right. meet or connect with each other. And that's some new age shit right there. Right. Because <clears throat> DJs we meet are just like, hey, tell me the lineup for the yeah. for the rest of the night. And We're they're in their own yeah. world. Yeah. yeah. And I think DJing, like 
wedding DJs, right? Because I said this to Jess. I'm like, there are disc jockeys and there are MCs. There, there, yes, there, yes. And so there are some people that are like really passionate about actually like spinning mm-hmm. and doing that. Like uh, DJ Smooth is one. Okay, yeah, yeah. Familiar, like, yeah. you know, he's been on tour oh, with Bruno Mars. Yeah. <laughs> I know him. I like him. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's, there DJ. are very few DJs that I like because he's a he's an actual disc jockey. Disc, disc jockey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then there's like the Italian uncle james and it's like i don't i don't yeah. like one time there's a big disparity in djing like you really you truly never know what you're gonna get like i showed up to a wedding this was two years ago and the guy was still spinning eight tracks and like had a whole ass business what one are, of the biggest bigger bi- i don't can we can we talk eight tracks eight tracks um so <clears throat> As opposed to having, you know, the whole playlist, basically. Like digitized have, on your yes. computer. Yeah. So it's all individually. It's 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 manual. So you're taking song to song to song. Almost like. Oh, cas- so they're not blending. You're not mixing them together. I mean, you can, but it's a lot more difficult. So yeah. kudos to him for, you know, doing that. But it takes a lot more effort. It's not as efficient yeah. or effective sure. in this new age. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was no new age music there. Was, there. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. It's probably the eight tracks yeah. that he's had yeah. in his shelf when it's yeah. at his house. For decades. Yes. And it, huge. And like they were a big, big company. And I was like, ah. but he was like the main guy. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, so I know that like the guys that work under him, mm-hmm. that's also the, a structure that's very popular with DJ companies mm-hmm. is like, there's one guy, it's his business. He started it and then he'll contract out and other, other DJs. Other people, yes. And that's yes. what I always mean. You really never know what you're going to get. Do you know what I did see at a wedding, which is really cool. And I'm going to shout her out. Her Instagram handle is working goth. Okay. And she spins records. Love it. So she like okay, yeah. was mixing them. Like yes. it was yes. it was dope. Like cool. that what is was a that? skill set. So and it is. It's that's and and San will tell you that is one of that's one of I won't say the biggest challenges, but when you get to the point where you're spinning vinyls, yeah. you are a definition disc jockey DJ. Mm-hmm. It was um, sick, honestly, I, because she obviously taking them out, putting them in, getting now everything that's, ready. That is definitely a task. It was sick. Um, it's nice. It's nice visually, and it's it gives for me. I, I love the uh, original sound of yeah. needle yeah. to vinyl. Yep, that's it. Where was that? Um, at a really awesome wedding I went to last year. Um, so cool. So the bride and the groom's vibe too. Like I love that. Music. It was. I mean, I'll maybe we'll tag her or something or yeah. put in the notes and stuff because it was it was really cool. That is so, so cool. Yeah. Should we get into? Yeah. I want to hear. So we asked Aaron to come with his like top tips. So I want to hear <clears throat> mm. your so, let's let's hear them for a sick party. Like, yeah, just like top tips for DJ. Yeah. Okay. Well, for planning a party, mm. planning a wedding party, party. or wedding, wedding, pa- wedding party, yeah. wedding party. I got you. Um, well, for me, I, I mentioned it. But one of the biggest things is if you're having several other vendors, create an opportunity for them to meet. Um, when I get to the wedding, one of the first things I do is meet with, or even an event, I meet mm-hmm. with whoever's catering it and whoever's documenting it, whether it be a videographer, photographer. Right. Um, mostly because I don't charge hourly. I'm there for the whole day, but these other people are on an hourly rate. So yeah. as opposed to trying to develop a schedule that fits around me, let's work on a schedule that develops around the photographer because they leave at 8.30 yeah. or 9. Let's make sure we get all the important stuff um, done and there and everything else can kind of you know flow along um but it also creates a safe space you know if vendors don't know each other they're in their own little bubble um and if i can break that ice and get the photographer more comfortable and then create uh, a dance floor environment to where people are out there and just naturally interacting like friends Mm -hmm. and family should then it allows them to document those genuine moments Right. Uh, we like to create moments that will ultimately create memories that last a lifetime. That's our biggest thing to yeah. to create those moments. But you can't have that without breaking that barrier first. Right. I think that's cool too. It's also because you're friends with photographers like you and Emily are tight, and mm-hmm. obviously us. And mm-hmm. it's like you you have a different view of it too. So you okay. like have a yeah. really good understanding of how we do things and how hectic your lives can be. Right. So it is my job as the I definition cool. MC to kind of ease that anything uh-huh. I can help with. Um, and it is a blessing having son as passionate about um, his turntables as he is yeah. because yeah. he prefers to stay where the music is. And it gives me an opportunity to step on another dance floor, mix and mingle with the family mm-hmm. and the vendors, as well as see what other vendors might need. Mm-hmm. Here's a question. Do you have any vendor horror stories? Like, do you have any oh, like, sure. oh, oh. bring them out, bring them out, bring them okay. out. Bring them out. Um, 
So typically, you know, it's 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 mostly caterers. I, I've I've yet That's to cool. experience a bad. I've been dogging caterers <clears throat> lately. Oh yeah, we've we had our, our you first don't bring me a basket of bread. Real bad. You're on my experience. list. Um, so typically, you know, the vendors, photographers specifically, get up and eat um, after the bride and groom, after the bridal party, yeah. usually after the parents, but right. like before the majority of the guests, so that they can get back to their task. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was informed to get in line with the photographer, San and I. And as we're getting in line, we get up to the food and one of the uh, servers comes out and she said, the head chef tells us we have to sit down. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. The bride and groom just told us to stand up. And he's staring at us, mean mugging, like just shaking his head. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm just, I'm just going through with the bride and groom. Right. And she's like, no, you guys have to eat last. But I'm in line with the photographers and right. the videographers, the everybody. We're all the vendors the are standing vendors. in line. And they're like, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm like, no, you're doing your job. So San's sitting there, uh, and he's he's and he's, he said the same thing. He's infuriated, like yo, I'm like yo, we're at work, okay? Yeah, it's a misunderstanding. Let's just sit down and get corrected. Um, now the bride's mom overheard, and she took the initiative and talked to him. Good. It was like, listen, get back in line. We have to apologize for the inconvenience. Sure. I'm like, no, it's, you know, he's doing his job, not a problem. But the rest of the e- okay. evening, he just mean mugged us. And I'm so I'm, I'm you know me, I'm yeah. I walk up, hi sir, how are you today? How you doing? <laughs> Who's delicious? Appreciate you. Thank you so oh, much. Kill them with kindness. Because at that point, no matter Kill what, you're having a bad day. I'm not going to let you affect how we handle this situation Good nor how we present ourselves to the couple. You know, right? Sometimes I don't even get to eat, so you, know, you, you ain't going to bug me at all. You know, I got snacks in my bag. We're right. good. Yeah, I come prepared. <clears throat> but my I, I my version it. of doing that is going up and being like, "What's your deal?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm no, like, no, no. What's your deal? No, it's Get it's it fine, out. and it's it it's funny because we have a uh, we've got a couple weddings confirmed uh, with the same catering company Stop coming up. It. So I'm really curious to see if that energy shall continue in these next coming months. Ew. At least you know it, though. Right, you know I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Expect? I'm ready. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just smile and wave, boys. Right, kill them with kindness. Right. Yeah, I now have it in my contract actually to like for vendor meals. Mm. One. Like the understanding, like we get fed, <laughs> and right. That's a big two. Thing. My suggestion is actually put us at a table with guests. Okay. So to like as the extra extra precaution of mm-hmm. like no matter what we're getting announced. Yeah, because yes. what's happening as I'm getting like higher budget weddings with these like higher budget like sit sit down meals, not the buffet. Right, right. Is they feed vendors last, and or they like forget about us, or they yeah. yeah, or they just don't care. Yeah, I had a, to have – and it's always awkward because it's like I know they're busy and it's like there are some venues when I I know I'm intentionally not being fed. Other times I'm like mm-hmm. they're, they're just busy. But like it's always – how embarrassing for you that you have the groom going back into the catering tent being like I need my vendors to be fed. Right. That's embarrassing. It is like embarrassing. just feed us. Like because what ha- happened was like now we're competing with the sun at this time of year. And so it was like – um, You're not gonna I, have time I had eat. five minutes to yes. eat, yeah. yeah, like choking down chicken. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just I was like stuffing my face with the taco, and the DJ's like, "Hey, I know you sat down. So sorry." Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the worst because like <laughs> usually we're the ones who have to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, because you check in with us, like, "Hey, yeah, hey, we ready. just so you know, ten minutes we're gonna yeah. do this announcement, and it's like, ah, oh, you got a whole plate of food. Like, uh, I feel you, but like, we gotta go." Yeah, I think that's interesting that ca- the ca- caterers. I figured you would have a, a photographer horror story or something. There's some shit you know, it's it's here. that was our that was our our first official like most uncomfortable moment I had been at a wedding to where we had to keep our yeah. composure. Aside from that, photographers, I've had photographers who are just nonchalant and they sure. seem like they don't want to be there. Oh, I just I'm doing this as a favor. I'm like, that's not really the energy yeah. to bring. But I'm going my it's then my goal to have you be as enthusiastic as I am. Yeah, I'm walking up and I'm dancing next to you like, hey, yeah. you about ready? Yeah, right. so. I'm going to create some type of moment to lighten the mood. Yeah. Um, I don't really have that kind of rapport with caterers. You know, I'm not right. about to be dancing, holding In this a plate situation, of food. Right, right. I don't know. I guess we can go here. Do you feel like there was like a racial <clears throat> aspect to that? That I was... didn't want to assume, but the it wasn't until the way that he was looking at us. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm like, like yes. there's no reason why, like if why, other vendors are if being If all fed. of us are in line and... Um, San and I are the only ones at this wedding. Okay. Right. So, I mean, we get that a lot. And honestly, it never bothers me. I like that all eyes on me because they're like, well, who are these guys? Yeah. And then once we start doing our job, they're like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. why they hired them. Yeah. Um, but in that moment, it's just like, you know what? I get that you might be, you know, stuck in your ways and your times, but ultimately, 
This is about the bride and the groom. So regardless of how you feel about us, yeah. let's get this job done. Yeah. Uh, Point blank. Yeah, I I was I guess I I just wondered that sitting here, like how often you run into issues like that mm-hmm. with that was the first time ever from a vendor. Yeah. Um, now, families all the time. You know, we get the families who are traditional and their grandparents or their great aunts and uncles see things a certain way. We get the eyes. But once we start doing our job, they don't care who we are. They're like, yeah. wow, these guys are awesome. And that's one thing that we really yeah. pride ourselves on. Like, listen, yeah. we're going to give them the same energy that we would give anybody, regardless of how their family right. is interacting with us. I don't care about them. You know, the bride and groom are cutting a check and we've gotten to know them on right. a personal level. So we know that they genuinely they like us. There. Yes. Right. So that's all that matters. Right. But it is like sad as like your friends that like you are numb to that initial reaction yeah. is yeah. like sad. No, numb numb is a good word. It is. Yeah. It is something that that happens. Um, I won't say more frequently than not, but to the point where you, you do you kind of become numb to it and you learn yeah. how to adjust and address it in your own way professionally because no matter what you have to stay professional Mm -hmm. yeah that's those sounds are going on in my head too but i've (laughs) I've gotten it to the point where it's like all right listen just handle it the way you would yeah well handle i yeah i (laughs) i would lose it it's like (laughs) yeah oh oh yeah if i if i catch wind of it you know what I mean? Like well, I And we appreciate you for I'm, that. You I'm, guys have always I'm been wild. great to us. I can be a little bad, but <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna say like I'm 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 the you know pinnacle of Rachel racial justice <laughs> right, here. Right. But I you know, if I catch whiff at a wedding, the next wedding we're at, I will I I I can make people cry. Uh, Oh, I'll believe it. I'd rather not see, but I'll I'll take your word for it. I try not to on a wedding day, but if I can get away with the bride and groom not knowing about it, you know? It's like I I pull someone aside like, hey. Act listen, right. Listen up. Act right or get out. Right. This is this is our party now. Talk right. to me nice or don't yeah. talk to me at all. Yeah. Take your yeah. forks home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Aaron, I want to hear about your wildest wedding story. Um, without incriminating, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> To be honest, your wedding was probably one of our wildest just because, you know, it was like, oh, it's going to end at 11. And then I think San and I, we hung out with you to like four o'clock in the morning. And then you're like, "Uh, no, just just stay here. So that was the first time I won't say that we (laughs) we broke professional boundaries. But like we had developed such uh, a friendship with you and Joe that it's like. We felt comfortable, Good. like, and we wanted to cater to you guys. And you're like, "Oh, just DJ by the fire pit." And I was like, "It's two o'clock in the morning." Oh, <laughs> but then we blink, God. and it's four o'clock in the morning. Like, "Yo, man, we're here. We've already committed. We're here." We're we, here. I know. I was like, "Did you guys book a place?" You're like, "No, we didn't book a hotel." I was like, "Plenty of cabins. <laughs> plenty of cabins." I was like, "Please stay, please yeah. hang." And you guys were like, "Okay." Yeah, it was. It was you awesome. Guys, the best part I remember is you guys busted out Chipotle. <laughs> Yes, fire, yes. fire, like you guys yes, kept this, yes. kept this for you specifically. Yeah, just in case. I, said, I can't believe you guys were up that late. Oh, oh I was, played a game of catch wild. up. Yeah, <laughs> that put me under, put me almost six feet under. Put yeah. you out, but also you were yeah. working, so you would be uh, tired. Yeah, you know, like there's a lot of pressure. Photographing yeah, was, your uh, best friend's wedding, you know. Like I don't. Me and Jack Daniels have some, <laughs> have some beef. We shall shall not go back. Right. Tell not go back down that road. No. But the fact that they were like anything happened at a bonfire. Like in the morning, Josh told me like oh, you were going ham on some pizza, and I was like, no, I no, wasn't. Was I don't remember. <laughs> I looked underneath my fingernails, and I was like, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yikes. Um, no, but that was awesome. Aside from that, um, <clears throat> wildest weddings. Oh, okay. So this has happened at three weddings. Um, and it's it's one of my you know do's and don'ts, oh, okay. mostly a don't. Mostly. Um, the tradition of picking the bride and groom up over your head and tossing yeah. them yeah. Okay. is from a vendor standpoint, it's just so terrifying. Oh my gosh. Terrifying. And I've seen so I've seen a groom get thrown twenty feet <laughs> in the air and his groomsmen are too drunk to catch him. No. Right? Stop. So we're outside um, at a, it's a concrete floor and I'm watching <laughs> them toss him. I'm just like, all right, gentlemen, that's, that's enough. And they go one, two, and you see the groom is upside down flailing. And when he comes down, like two of them were able to catch his legs and one arm. 
So he does. He comes down on his shoulder and just, oh, you hear this. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. you try not to laugh because you're concerned. But it's like, I tried oh, to tell you. Oh, hey, my yeah. God. On the dance floor. On the dance floor. Um, I'm thinking, I thought like Jewish wedding in the chair. Da, in the chair. Da, da. So oh, that's that. safe. Da, da. That's safer. It you, is you safer can, because you... you've got more grip. And I've seen that yeah. go wrong as well. Yeah. Not yeah. as nearly as yeah. bad, but I'm well, talking. Normally they're... it's not done at the like, end of the night. Normally yeah. the, right. the old people it's like early. to be there to We're see it. We're talking right. like a cheerleading basket toss. Correct. Okay. But improper form all okay. the way through. Okay. Right? Terrible form all around. Horribly executed. Oh my God. Have you seen any injuries at a wedding? Um, on the dance floor i mean you see <laughs> i've seen a videographer uh he had a drone and the drone cut his finger <gasps> i had to get first aid oh my god um, i did i had luckily i had my uh my lifeguard kit in the truck i'm like yo i've got some some bandages um i mean you still got like three hours left right let's let's yeah. get you bandaged yeah. up and keep going yeah. um but that was interesting because it's like it was a it was a nice drone and he's like he's typically used to catching it and I guess it fell faster, and so his hands were like this, and it just chopped right in the blade. Um, clean slice. I don't know if he had to get stitches, but it was it was deep. It was. It oh was, my god! Um, I've never heard of drone that's incidents. Not, <clears throat> that's that's not a sanctioned move, really. No. Yeah. I've heard of letting it off from your hand like this. You yeah, know, I, I don't suggest, it? especially after witnessing it. Like, and I watched the whole thing. I'm like, oh, you you got this. Yeah, I Wish I hadn't encouraged him because, uh, like, he was way too confident. Way too, confident. Uh, way too confident. We're all wearing white. All right, bro. Let me take a couple <laughs> steps back. I mean, <laughs> but also, like, how many how many wasted girls eat shit on the dance floor? Oh, okay, Those that are I've some seen. Tumbles. Now, recently, <laughs> I've seen. This is one of my favorites. This is a a bridesmaid who went above and beyond. She got tired of tripping over her bridesmaid dress, mm -hmm. and I watched her cut it. Yes. Cut it above the knee so that she could dance more comfortably. I mean, normalize she's on the dance that. floor. No, hey, normalize scissors. that. Normal. She she cut, and I'm just like, I hope I hope you own that dress. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she does. <laughs> Straight. It was cute still. I'll yeah. give her that. that yeah. Let us not live the lie that you will ever wear your bridesmaid dress again. I don't care if you set you have them to match right. or not. You're not. No. You're not going to wear it again. Just like you don't wear. I mean. As wedding guests, I know yeah. I don't attend many weddings as, as a guest, but we don't, I don't wear those again. Mm. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll buy a dress for a wedding, never wear it again. Yeah. Even if I'm not even in it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just like, I've worn it once, my pictures are in it. I'm not going to be seen at another wedding with that same dress. I know, know? and it has like a very specific. So yeah, I'm on, yeah, just just cut it so, off, gals. Yeah. From a guy's standpoint, that's not a thing for us. We're going to re wear that suit time oh, and time again. Oh, I know. A suit is a great investment for it is. Men, though. It is. Yeah. Especially a good one, get it fitted. Yep, yeah. But girls, it's, it's, it's always like with the season, too. So it's like in two years when I go to another wedding, am I even going to like this dress anymore? Yeah. No. Right. So right. Right. Suits, right. suits are timeless. Right. Gray suit? Right. Gray suit? Yeah, and I, I love, I got a three-piece gray suit that's my favorite. I can create at least six outfits from exactly. it. There you so go. We're exactly. good. There you go. Also, you did, I remember you asked, too, and I don't remember any other DJ asking me, he's like, what should I wear to your wedding? Like, what, what kind of vibe are you, are you guys giving now? Like, yeah. How should I dress? So one of the biggest things, I like to ask that um, because one of my biggest fears, I don't even say fears, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I get there and I'm wearing the same thing as the groomsmen, or the groom. Ooh. I feel like that is a, a DJ no-no. Yeah. You know, there's no way you should be wearing the same suit as the groom on his wedding day. Mm. Um, and I've got nice suits. So yeah. when these grooms and groomsmen are investing in their suits, they're nice suits. Yeah. Um, and this has happened at least three or four times, which is why, Sean and I always keep extra ties, bow ties, things in my car <laughs> just in case I'm matching the groomsmen. I need to switch it out real quick, even if I just take off a jacket and wear the shirt yeah. open. Yeah. Um, I just feel like it's something that that's your day. You should have that moment. I'm not going to look I'm like I'm not, you. yes. I don't, I don't want to outdress you yeah. on your wedding day. Oh, my God. What is your – so you had another piece of advice that you came up with. Um, what was the first one? Allow the vendors to meet – oh, um, input. Um, most people on my – I have this template that I created because um, most, most wedding couples that I've worked with, most of my clients don't have – Wedding coordinators don't have okay. day of coordinators. You know, us as millennials, oh, we could do it all ourselves. Yeah. But unless you're in this business, there are little details that you don't think of to ask. Yeah. Um, so I found myself asking these. So I created the template. And on the template, it says, I have a section that says, do not play these songs at my wedding, which mm -hmm. I feel like yeah. is a huge one that most DJs that. miss. Um, and do you want your guests to make requests? I always give the disclaimer. Yeah. If you want your guests to make requests, we're not just going to play anything that they request. 
Um, if we feel like it's outlandish, we're going to check with the bride and groom first. But I like to encourage the couples to check in with your guests, check in with your families. One thing that I love is when I've noticed this a lot lately, when they send out invitations, there's a little section that says, hey, give us a, a song suggestion that you might want to hear at the wedding. I love when couples do that mm -hmm. because now you get a feel for, you know, what your guests yeah, want to dance to. I do like to. that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even if we don't play them all, it gives us a general understanding. So what I love and one of my biggest advice is don't, don't hesitate or refuse suggestions from your family and friends. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use them, but allow them to feel like they're a part of it sure. because they're going to be a part of it the day of. You want to make yeah. sure they're having a good time. We're going to make sure as vendors that the bride and groom have a good time regardless. Yeah. But how do we cater to some of these other guests? We're yeah. going to leave gifts and want to be a part of this memory with you. So. Yeah. yeah. And something I don't think that couples will <laughs> think of before their wedding is like how much fun you have watching other people have yes, fun. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Like you think of the songs you want to dance with with your girls, but like nothing. You, seeing Aunt Linda on the dance floor is is one of those memories that's going to stick with is you. Just, yes. It's great. It's yes. so good. And, yeah. and Aunt yeah. Linda deserves to have that yes, moment. Yes, she does. You do? Yes, she's my favorite. Oh, she's my favorite. <laughs> she was out there busting up the she was. <laughs> she was. She was. She 100% was. Uh, what is your okay? I need to know both of yours. You already know mine. If you know, if you know me, but oh. the do not <laughs> no, song you hate the most. No, uh, nothing will. One time, one time I shot a wedding for someone whose Lizzo was on her oh no no list, and I said never Ooh, again. Couldn't will be I speak me. to you. Couldn't be me. Never again. <laughs> I won't keep in contact with you. For me, I was like, second shooting. I was second what did I say? I think my. Do not play like I want to dance with somebody Whitney Houston. Yes, uh, I yes. love Whitney Houston. But at I'm a just, wedding, I mean, it's it's, it's different for vendors. Yeah, yeah we hear so, it all the time. Yes, you know, we hear it at every yeah. wedding. Um, What's your most? Played? If you could murder one group dance song, what would it be? <gasps> if if you could eradicate it from the universe, the chicken dance. Okay. <gasps> oh my gosh. People still, still be doing that. Oh my gosh. Oh my. You're gosh. kidding. Do you and get out there though, or do you like you post up a song during that time? It's the your first, job to get out there and first two times I did the chicken <laughs> dance, I did, and then you're I after did, you're and I'm this. like, yo, there's no way because it's so repetitive. And like as a kid, you're like, oh yeah, chicken dance, wah 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 wah. And every time you do, it's like you did it for the first time. Yes, and, and it's then, like, oh, you're an adult, okay, you're like, all right, time. this is so <laughs> cringeworthy. Seeing everybody out there, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I'm yes, I'm I'm for four. Right yes, yes. So the chicken dance. If I could eradicate that from every playlist ever, please <laughs> Maybe that remove be it. Your stipulation, like no I chicken dance. Like, I will not. I play. will not no. play this song. No chicken dance. I'll play it, but I won't like it. Yeah, <laughs> I do some crazy dances, like different shuffles <clears throat> and stuff I've never even seen. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it was. So a uh, line dances. I like the line dances. Um, what I've gotten a lot recently is brides who are like, and I've heard this, I thought it was the craziest thing, but I, I, I've heard it at least four or five times. Brides say, I don't want line dances because I don't want anybody to tell me what to do on my wedding day. And I'm like, yo, that's, hey, I, I got to respect that. That's hilarious. Right? Yes, ma, go ahead. Yes. Now, you right. That's your day. Nobody's going to tell you what to do on your wedding day. And I've heard at least three or four brides say that uh, in the last two years. And... I'm like, yo, son, no, no line dances because she's yeah. not having it. And I respect nice. it. I said no line right? dances because it's corny. <clears throat> yeah. I was big on no corn ball. No yeah. corn ball. That's why right. I hired right. <laughs> I, If I got married no again, dances. I would have to do the Cupid Shuffle for sure. The Cupid Shuffle. See, guys, Nothing will get her out of her seat like the, the Cupid Shuffle. Right. Man. So usually um, those uh, couples that say no line dances, um, there's always a uh, guest that requests it. Yeah. Um, and we'll say 80% of the time, I end up sneaking one in. Always ask with the bride first, like, hey, your guests have requested this four or five times. Just let's give them one. Yeah. Um, and it's typically usually either the cha-cha slide or the wobble. People love the wobble. Mm, the, wobble the wobble is, is good. The wobble's got a nice yeah. deep to it. It is. It's, and it's easy to transition into. Sure. We don't have to play. The cha-cha slide is just so long. And yes. I, that's the, the go-to dance where people like, he's just telling us what to do the whole time. I got you, Mike. Yeah. You ain't got to listen. You ain't got to listen to Casper yeah. slide. You know, right. we're good. Right. Not part two. <laughs> every, like, every time the cha-cha slide comes out, I'm just doing the four corners. As a photographer. I, I'm just and, I'm and I'm never. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to get with Every them. time they're facing me, I'm like. Right. I'm moving to this yeah. and then moving to this corner. What is your like lose your mind? Like the song that like no matter every wedding you're like, this is hitting right for oh, me. Sure. Mm, yeah. That's a good is one. Is it not? Is it not Usher? Usher, yeah. yeah. 
typically that, that play at every wedding. That's yes, yes, that is that is played at ninety nine percent of our weddings. Unless I have had a bride say we don't want that song, which is r- rare. I've only had one to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, um, but it is. It's one of those. It's that song easy. is like it's in the back of your mind. It is when and you hear you're like, oh, you going to oh, a yeah. wedding? Yeah, yeah. It's yes. timeless. It is. It is I know. for sure. That's crazy. I'm but what's my song? What the one you want to, need to play? Yeah, the one I need to hear. Is it not Lizzo? No. I don't know. I like it by Cardi B. Oh, yeah. I like it like that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. The, one of the best. Honestly, I was saying this to Madison because I was editing a wedding video right now and like going through clips and that was playing and I'm just dancing in my seat watch this clip. It's good. And I was like, this is probably honestly top five favorite songs of all time. So it is me. It hits it right. Okay. So Usher, yes, for sure. Um, but as a vendor, you know, we also get tired of hearing it. So my go to and it's rare Friday night weddings when we play. This is how we do it. Oh. It's Friday. This is how we do it. Yeah. It's Friday night. Yeah. yeah. So oh the moment it, it hits, night. yes. Oh, I love that. Song. Yes. And I feel all, all right. right. The body's here, here on the west side. side. Yeah. So when, <laughs> when it's a Friday wedding and that song hits, and that, hits that your, gets that, me going. I'm like, yo, it's it. You the damn right it's Friday. Right there. Yeah. I reach for my body. Yeah. So good. What's your stress? It's, it's ushers, yeah. No, I mean, I don't really care. I mean, like, that's a good one. I feel like that is the nice transition it is. that we talk. Hello. It's my coffee pot telling oh. me it's turning off. Um, I feel like that's a nice transition mm-hmm. into the Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Motown. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then we you get can Usher, go anywhere from there. Usher, Bruno Mars. Oh, you could have done that on the mic, Aaron. Yeah. A little <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> okay. um, what's my must play? Yeah. I mean, I'm. Aaron knows all mine from my wedding. I don't know. I, I, also, I, a year ago. Christina and Damon, the Charleston couple, mm-hmm. they were like, <laughs> they talked about you guys. They were like, we, at one point, um, Damon's really into rap music. He's like, at one point, all of a sudden, like, vibes are right. He's like, all of a sudden, I thought, he's like, I didn't know if I heard this right, but fuck up some comments by Future was playing yeah. at the wedding. And I was like, <laughs> yes. not yes. only that, but some cut. Yes. <laughs> yes. What? So we. What it is, ho? So you gave us <laughs> when you gave us. So the biggest thing, your wedding was our first wedding that you're like, all right, after this time, uncensored. And San had a field day. I know. He's yeah. like, like, oh my censored? gosh, yes, let's go. He's, he's like, never been able he's ne- to. Yes, like I said, you gave us. You were the first wedding to give us complete freedom to do what we do. Now, we typically bring. Um, and San and I just realized this. But like when you said disc jockey and mm-hmm. MC, we are the definition of a disc jockey and a master of ceremonies. That yeah. is by definition who we are. That should be in your brand. Right. And that's we, we've been trying to work okay. that out. Okay. So he is he is a definition disc jockey. Yeah. I am a master of ceremonies just in the sense that, you know, he's passionate about the music. I am as well. But I'm more passionate about the flow and about yeah. the yeah. people. Yeah. You know, how do I get the crowd to react to what the DJ is doing? Well, I think that <clears> is what <throat> makes you guys such an awesome duo because – my love, speaking from a bride standpoint and having you guys there, is like the passion that I know San feels when he is being a disc jockey yeah. makes mm. my heart so happy. Yeah. And then you being out there dancing with us knows that everyone is happy. It's like the flow is so it right. Is. Yeah. It is. I truly said that that was the best decision I made at my wedding. Well, we, we appreciate for that. Real for real though, because sure. I almost went with Kid Cootie. <laughs> yeah. My life would have been ruined. The vibes would have been so yeah. wrong, Jess. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You can't even. But I'm telling you, I'm just going to praise them for one more Keep going. moment. But never forget where we were like leaving our consult. We met up for beers. Never forget. And they're like, is there anything like you want like. That's not on Apple or Spotify, like some deep cuts or anything. And I was like, if you could get Lil Wayne's the, off uh, of a mixtape, right? Upgrade, upgrade you. you. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. We took that and to heart. He, and he was like, bet. Right. It's all he said. He said bet. <laughs> and I said, it's sure. seriously such a really crazy song that me and my girlfriends listened to in high school, and like you would blow their mind if it played. Yeah, yeah. And, and what watching they did, that moment is it not, at your is wedding, it not out on Spotify or anything anymore. No, it's a mixtape. It's yeah. a mixtape. Oh, yeah. oh no, but, yeah, no. I'm surprised you had to get that off Dat Piff. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's exactly where we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, they did like upgrade you, Beyonce, Jay Z, and led that transitioned into, into it the, was yes. sick. I have goosebumps thinking about that. When my friends knew that that's what was playing, we went crazy. I blacked out. I blacked out emotionally, but also <laughs> I was just like taking double shots of stuff to catch up because I had like was way too, I was just like way too sober. And then I don't remember. 
It was an unbelievable moment. So really, though, if brides are like, you need different songs or anything else, like, I don't yeah. know if any DJ would have ever even offered that. So Yeah. And yeah, it was we, like one of my favorite moments of my it's, wedding. It, music, music, we like to ask couples, like I said, when I, when I meet with couples, I say, you know, pick songs that you and your, your friends danced to in high school. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. what happens is it resonates with those memories. Yes. And you get the chance to relive them in your adult lives. Same with your... Your, your parents' songs that they dance with you at, at their weddings their wedding. because mm-hmm. that's a moment that they get to relive while mm-hmm. witnessing their children have that same moment. And yeah. it's it's stuff like that that you can't, that's priceless. You yeah. know? And yeah. if we can provide an opportunity for that, then let's go. Let's try it. Right. I love that. Me too. So, so good. Okay. Where are we at on time? We're good on time. Because like, okay. I, mean, I have a few more questions. I've keep going. It doesn't matter. Keep going. Okay. Aaron, what has been your biggest challenge in your job? <clears throat> And this could be anything. Finding a name. Oh, my gosh. So, so, which is something so simple. Like I said, San and I, at least three times a week, we're texting each other back and forth like, yo, what about this? And then we'll do the research, and there's either already a DJ name by mm-hmm. it or a company that's really branded themselves. Yeah. Um, and we, we've been blessed with great clients and great friends that recommend us and keep us in business. But we know that that is the biggest thing holding us back right now. Yeah. Him and I, have we have a commercial shot. A uh, videographer friend of mine, I brought him to a wedding and he documented the whole setup, the whole process. It was a 1920s themed wedding, so it is awesome. Yeah. But Sick. I refuse to release it until we can brand ourselves. So I, are these <laughs> names you're keeping close to the chest, your options? No, like, I'll, I'll read okay, off some of the ones we, we have. We can give our feedback and we can even get the pod, the pod people. Okay, yeah, for sure. Vote. Because I'm to the point where we said we're deciding by this year. I'm to the point where I'm going to go on, on the gram and be like, yo, $100 to whoever comes up with our name. <laughs> yeah, it's to the point where it's it shouldn't be this stressful. Um, but it's important. So. Right. So thus far, we've had Mr. I Do. That one was X'd out because that was just me independently. Um, Gentlemen with Flow. Two dope DJs. Either T-O-O or T-W-O. Dope DJs. <gasps> right? I love that. So, yes. okay. Give us a second. <laughs> Oh, so we're it's we don't know if if like with dope in the name like that's that's the thing too like as much this generation is short by all means but at the same we'll time out. right okay so we want to make sure that we are catering to the the wide brand range so we're I'm not I'm not dismissing any of these names wow, they're so on the dope list goes back. yeah dope um, goes back it's timeless right the the flow music and memories simply AJ and San um, what we do events and entertainment. Most like DJs, masters of ceremonies, uh, fifth house energy, and all in one entertainment. Fifth house energy, explain <clears throat> that. Fifth house energy, I would, I won't get into as depth as San could. Okay, um, okay. we're big astrology buffs, yeah, I was gonna but say it has something but like San, San is like, yo, he is professor astrology. For Maybe sure. we can have him on the pod. Well, he's for, coming on the pod, sure. but we can do a small bit on astrology. He will yes. pop off. Yeah, he will, and he's, I mean, he, he's, he'll get you locked in an hour conversation. I was he in, will. and I was like, he lost me, man. He's, but it's it's to the point where. You know, he's not just one of those like, oh, you know, your zodiac. Like, he who do his research. He has books. He if he's I need in his him to, I need him to birth so, chart no, me. So I don't want anyone else to birth chart me other than Son. Okay, 100%. no, he, he got you for sure. <laughs> but for no, sure. during um, my sister's speech, she yes. really plugged into that. And yeah, Son was he like, lost oh, it. yes, he, he was. Lost he's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah he's he into was, it for he sure. Was, he was he's so out. cute and adorable. It was. It was rad. Okay, so I remember the first, maybe the second two. So I like I I do like two, two dope, dope DJs. DJs. I like two O O. Okay, yeah, two yeah. dope, like two dope, they're two dope, T O O. Yeah, they're two yeah. dope. Right, but see, and that, but we wanted to be able to play off of you know two dope DJs or you know two individuals, two yeah, dope two DJs. Dope. So how have you interpreted? it? Um, and I did. I took the initiative and I went on Instagram and I I reserved both names just Good. In case, I love just it. in case it worked out. Yeah. Um, we so we're not entirely it. locked in. Like I said, we're going to take some other options, but no matter what, even if we choose to rebrand ourselves down the road, by the end of this year, we're coming up with something. Yeah. We have to, because... And it was Fifth House Entertainment. <clears throat> energy. Energy. Which I Fifth like the energy. energy in that. Like, Right. I like energy, that too. Because I feel like that's still trendy, but it's like, I don't know. Here's like my here's my one bit on branding as someone that's done it way too many times. Okay. Once you pick it, you will not think about it. Okay. Once you pick it and, and invest in a logo and you get the website. It's like, that is you. That's mm-hmm. you. It's like a and, tattoo. Yep. Right, okay. And, and right. you, you stop being like, oh, what? It's, it is it's exactly like is. a tattoo. It's, it's, it's like, 
yes, you could change it. You know, you can cover it up if you want. But, but you just own it. Once you're just living it, once you're living as two dope DJs. It is what it is. <laughs> you're, I like, you're telling oh, I, I like that. I like, that. I like, I like that. I, but I do like Fifth House, Fifth House Energies, okay. too. I think that's cool. But I like two dope DJs because I think it. I, I can I can really picture the logo like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what artist is inspiring me with the logo, but I'll think of it. But we'll, we'll talk for sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. <laughs> and we can do your yeah. We can do your photo shoot here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We have a good branding gal. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I was yeah. going to go into common myths about DJs, but we oh. kind of been we kind of been debunking them should we go through them <laughs> yeah i mean i what i'm gonna ask you first what is the common myth about djs do you feel like you have to you debunk feel? at every uh like one off rip off the dome that you could think of um i think you you said it um not every dj is an mc and not every mc is a dj yeah um i've noticed a lot now i've, I've met some some really nice ones who kind of have a balance between the two they don't exceed at one or the other but it's a nice mm-hmm. mix and it makes for an awesome wedding um, but what people need to realize is that those are technically two separate services, yeah. having somebody host and entertain and help you with scheduling and, and meet with your vendors is the definition of like a master of ceremonies, mm-hmm. ceremonies or an MC uh, DJ is, is simply somebody who is going to provide music for you. So I've, yeah. I've been to weddings where people are thinking they're going to get an MC and the DJ is just like, no, I don't, I'm not comfortable talking on the microphone. Um, did the couple not know that beforehand? You know, like most people don't. Yeah, you know, you assume it comes with it. If you've been to, if you've only been to weddings, you know, if you've only been to weddings where the DJ has done it all, or you see two people do it all, you assume like, oh yeah, that's what a wedding mm-hmm. DJ does. But um, that is two separate services yeah. that oh, yeah. most of us kind of just bulk into one. Yeah. Um, but technically, I mean, I've but met, also to be good at both is probably is it that- is it is definitely a great trait to have. Yeah. Um, like I'm comfortable. On the turntables, but I would in no way impose on Sign because he is the dopest DJ I yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it. and Big it's and I I don't I don't have a problem stepping out of the way and allowing him to be great in his own lane and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Now we do have moments where um, we'll be like, all right, Sign, I want you to make an announcement just so you get more comfortable mm-hmm. and vice versa. He'd be like, all right, I'm about to step out. Can you play these next two songs? Mm-hmm. Um, just to make sure that we are both familiar with the equipment and comfortable in that field. If something were to, you know Should I mean? something happen, we have to be in that position, That's correct? You, yeah. So, but at the same time, as long as we're both there, do you. Be great in your own lane. Yeah. I love you guys. Yeah, seriously. Okay, here's some common myths that I, that came up. Okay. All DJs are wannabe rappers. Oh, that I thought that was funny myth. with you because you're a musician. <laughs> right, like, right. So you know. <laughs> no, but I just thought that was funny. And I don't find that to be true in at the wedding, wedding industry. No, no not, especially not in the wedding industry. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, most, most, most DJs in general. Now, most DJs, a lot of DJs, more than not, are producers. Mm. They like to make beats and, and develop rhythms to potentially give to artists and rappers. Right um, now, I'm, I know more DJs who are producers mm. than than anything else. Right. Oh, okay, that makes sense though. Yeah, they know a lot about music, mixing music. Also, side note: San is one of the dopest producers I know as well. We so love him. he, I can't wait he's got on the show, and he can speak for himself. Right? He, he's so cute. He's so <laughs> he really is. He's just like so... like the the human embodiment of the Franklin cartoon. To me. <laughs> You know? Respectfully speaking. Respectfully. Yeah, yeah. Only respectfully. Yes. Yeah, he is, he is. He's got great energy. He's he got does. the dopest energy. He does. Two dope DJs. Two dope. Okay. Um, another myth. Good parties just happen. No. 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 Can't. No. They, can't they don't. So I'm also thinking this about the MC um, and not having one. I've actually had a few weddings that do live music. Yeah. And the band oh, yeah. are not MCs. Mm. And the flow is so off. Like there yeah. was an issue with dismissing tables, um, getting how the party flows. Oh, we're going to lead into dances right now. Let's have everyone step outside. Like right. we're moving the dance That's floor. That's this awkward energy of like, wait, are, what are we doing? Well, it's transition? also like in how you say it too. So I just like give credit. It's like not that easy to just get on a mic and be like, all right, everybody, we're heading out here. Like right. it's just yes. a flow of yes. things. And like actually like giving time like all right guys uh, in about five minutes we're gonna be sitting down for dinner like that cue those <laughs> cues are just like important to the flow of a reception so i'll share this with you guys um the way that i got as comfortable with the microphone like i've always i like to think i've always been some form of performer um but i was 
making my own music. I was performing for a while, and my performances were trash. I was not like I, I think I'm a. I like to think I'm a decent artist now. You're pretty great, Aaron. Wise. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But I was not always that way. My music, listening back, was trash. My stage <laughs> presence was trash. I had no idea. <laughs> um, but so for my. 22nd birthday, I wanted to do something different to help me get more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, So I reached out to a comedian friend of mine and I did stand up comedy for a couple months. Um, And I have the utmost respect for comedians because, you know, as an artist, you can get up there and if things get awkward, the music's still playing. Get the crowd going. Get the crowd. Work the crowd. As a a comedian. Awkward. It's awkward silence. If you're not making them laugh, it's crickets. Right. And then it's just this tension. Right. So I, I had to develop that comfortability talking without music by trying to entertain a guest who want to laugh. Mm-hmm. So one of my opening things, my very first time doing stand-up comedy, I'm like, you know, this is my first time. If I'm not funny, don't laugh. And they cracked up, right? I and I'm like, oh, like, cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> this would be easy. Um, oh but one of the things that you learn from there and that I'm sure a lot of comedians will tell you is timing. Don't rush the joke. Don't rush what you're saying. Allow time for the audience to process mm-hmm. the information as well as letting the room breathe, you know? Interesting. So I'm like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to have you all step outside. Yes. Time for them to take it in. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, a- right? right? Ladies and gentlemen, you take it. So now you've got their attention. <laughs> you want all eyes on you. And even if I don't get all attention, if I still hear people, I'll be like, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? If I don't get anything after the second time, I'll be like, can I hear you make some noise? And then oh, I'll get everybody involved. We know. God, right? So it's, it's all about crowd control. You mm-hmm. have to demand their attention and then guide them where you want them to go. And I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, and I'll name drop Mary Santora. I don't know if you guys are familiar. She is a, a huge co- comedian in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Um, and she gave me my first opportunity to get on stage and, and express myself as mm. a vocalist, per se. I won't even say yeah. as a comedian, just as a host. You know, an opportunity to kind of get a feel for how it is to direct an audience. Yeah, that's awesome. Wait, can I ask you... Um, what were some of your bits about in stand-up comedy? Life. Oh, my gosh. What, so, really? like, I, I would like to think I live an interest, interesting life. Um, and the older I got, um, I, was, I was a difficult kid. I gave my parents hell. So, like, stories about me acting up in school yeah. or me being just like my father and him and I would, like, fight um, verbally and physically. And I'm like, I remember the first time I beat my dad up. And people were like, oh my gosh, this is dark. I'm like, no, not really. You know, I was I was a skinny little kid, and he definitely whooped my ass. So, but in my mind, I won. You know, right. so stories like that, I I try not to make things up. I I like to think that I, I live an interesting life enough that um, I live to what people can relate to. Mm-hmm. Tell tell stories that people can relate right. to. Something that's going to resonate with them. Mm-hmm. Um, now I won't say I'm at all a a standout stand up comedian. Um, I think I'm just a funny individual from time to time. But you just do so many yeah. things. Like you kayak, <laughs> you are skydiving now. Yeah. You, yeah. Um, I think you were beekeeping at one point. Yep, like I am a beekeeper. You do yeah. have so much. I is. There's a lot going on in my life. Right. Um, so it's like very much an interesting person. And I we're not always, even getting to half of it. In I this always podcast. get the question, um, what aren't you good at? And my response is, I don't know yet. You know, oh, look at you. I'm willing to try a little bit of everything. Um, and I just, I find enjoyment in life. Like I said, I didn't think I would be doing weddings at this point. I did it, got into it by accident. And, you know, time will tell that it was meant to be. Right. You know, the ball kept rolling. And uh, I love this more than anything else. We've been doing Good. this for five years and I'm I, I'm wholeheartedly in it. Good. I, that was one of my questions, too, because you do so many things um, along with your job for the city. I was like, what is your favorite? Or like, And I wanted to know, if, like, if, do you guys see yourself doing this moving forward for like five years? For sure. For sure. Um, definitely expanding. So when we finally solidify our branding, we want to be, you know, we don't want to cater to just weddings. We're going to say uh, weddings, vow renewals, um, anniversary parties and private events. Okay. That mm-hmm. private events can be interpreted as is. Like you know, corporate events. Right. Yeah. We're we're I'm not trying to do any more proms. If the price is right, don't get me wrong, cool, but I'm over my High prom school, phase. Yeah. Grinding? yeah, no. Right. Yeah, no. I'm I'm You're past done. that. You're so done. um <laughs> private <laughs> events for us would be left to interpretation. We don't want to exclude you, but if it's an opportunity where yeah. we feel like it's going to be great. Um, definitely more formal events. I like an mm-hmm. opportunity to, to dress up okay. and be professional and bring, you know, more laid back vibe to a professional setting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's a, a random question, kind of one that I just have in general <clears throat> for my life. Because like when I when I think of like Josh and I getting married, right, like mm-hmm. it's small, like 40 people. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like there's ever like a number of an event where you're like, you don't really need anything formal or like, you know, I feel like any event 
has the opportunity to be formal. It's ultimately, you know, like formal as in having a, a DJ, DJ there. Like, well, I, guess- I've, I think San and I have done events for like. 10, 10, 15 people. Well, that's what I was thinking. When I was like, come down to the fire. There's going to be like 15 right? people there. I was like, just bring the speaker. Let's just. And mm-hmm. we create, same thing. People it's are creating a vibe. They want a good time. That's yeah. it. So small events. We love small events because then we can genuinely cater yeah. to everyone in yeah. attendance. You know, we don't have to worry about 250 guests. Uh, I don't know if I like this song or. Me, me thinking this? about. But it's also me like, thinking about my family and Josh's family. In the same right, room. right, right, right. But it, yeah, it's also like as involved or not involved. You know what I mean? Like right. maybe he makes yes. two announcements. One, like Rachel and Josh are heading out to do their first dance. And, and other then, than like, that, it's everyone just, on the dance floor. It's like he, just a yeah. good time. Yes. And other than that, I'm That's just me dancing saying, like, you. bring them to your wedding. I was like, <laughs> if you were having a wedding with them not being there, I won't be in attendance. <laughs> That's why I'm like, yeah, there's a need for them. There's definitely a need. You know, so and we 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 like to cater to clients that, you know, if you have specific needs. Like, I have clients reach out, like, we're not big dancers. You know, we don't really mm-hmm. have that strong of a music taste. And then they're cutting a rug. Right? Dance floor. So, but you still want to give them the same energy that you would give. Um, I had a, a guy who was a uh, a artist he gave me one of the best advice, you know, no matter what you're performing for a crowd, if it's a crowd of one or 1,000, you know, mm. give them the same energy you would give that 1,000. Yeah. Because you never know who's in attendance, who's watching, or who genuinely needs that release. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. I guess my last question is, how would someone go about booking you or finding you or your music, <laughs> supporting you and San in okay. any way? Um, until we establish our site, you can follow San and I both on Instagram. Um, I am at Aaron James 216. San is at san.wave. That's S A N dot W A V, no E. Um, Wav. <laughs> um, it's like wave file. Yeah. Most people don't get that, oh, right? Yeah. right? Of course, it's methodical, <laughs> right? It's stuff was um, all thought out. Uh, aside from that, uh, you guys can reach out to Jess and Rach. They have all of our contact information. Um, and I have had a f- quite a few people reach out. I'm booked, I think, more with you guys hey! next year uh, as photographers so, than so. I, I am for anybody else. Yes. Um, oh, I even I think had Emily a- Richards beats us, though. In in the past, she yeah. has, but as of recently, it's not a competition. <laughs> it's not. It's not. But as of recently, I've done more. We'll make one. I've met with more brides on behalf of you two recently than I have anybody else, which I am so grateful for. That you know, Absolutely. we got we're booked for a wedding yeah. in, in Charleston. We have a Let's, blast, right? I mean, show's um, family all over again. So <laughs> I'm, I'm at four. You know the vibe. But yeah, uh, Aaron James two one six on Instagram. Oh, you can also find me. I'm, that's all social media at Aaron James two one six. Um, YouTube, Aaron James 216. If you're looking for music, yes. you can go on Spotify and type in Aaron James. It's the guy with an orange background and a wide brim sun hat. Yep. Um, <laughs> he's, got he's got an aesthetic. He's got an aesthetic. He's got an aesthetic. That's for sure. <laughs> well, we are so proud of you. Thank you one. so much, Seriously. ladies. I like, appreciate yeah. you. It, it really is so exciting to be in both of your guys's like space during those days, especially when they're days where like we know you're just doing your thing. Like obviously Jess's wedding comes to mind, but like every wedding I've shot with you, like you're just you're just an overall shining light. I think <laughs> good presence to be yeah, we good appreciate that. yeah. That's that's the goal. Yeah. Good. Well, well thank you, thank so you much. for coming. Aaron. Absolutely. Good ladies, this was too. awesome. Thank yeah. you. You would have All right. See you guys. We suck at outros. So <laughs> <laughs>